today on the weekly what is it we have FLIR 1 this is for Android we'll open it up and see what's inside we have the FLIR device Nice case. And the charging cable. Not much in instructions, but let's take a look. The infrared sensors and camera. So we have here that's the USB C connector. That's pretty neat. This little this little thumb wheel actually will take that connector in and out to adjust uh, I'm assuming for different phones and for different cases. So as I pull out my carry phone now, which is a, a, the Google Pixel 2, I do have a case on it, and it seems like at that depth it will work with my case, so that's neat. I have installed the FLIR 1 app. There we go. Settings. Emissivity. Temperature units, which I, I have set mine to Fahrenheit. Automatic calibration. So that's what it looks like on the phone. back into the app now and relaunch it just to show what it does when you already got it hooked up and going into it I will take some short video from this and have it have it on there as well I do have to turn that target on. Now that target does show me a temperature. I'll have this video showing as well. If I can get right on that solder iron. Yes, yeah, definitely well above 300. I wanted to show how useful this tool is for a price tag of about $200. It's a way to turn your phone into an infrared flare camera. And I've heard um, some bad things about the FLIR 1 as far as registering it every time you had to... Uh, to run the app to use it and things of that nature that 
that were more negative, but I also read before I bought it that they had changed that app, so I don't know anything about the previous version. I do know this version. I have not had to register it yet. Um, I probably will eventually do so just for warranty issues, but they have changed the way they do it, and you don't have to log in like I've seen some, uh, like I say, negative reviews about it. So I decided to give it a try, and so far, just a few minutes playing with it, I really like it. I think it's going to come in handy tearing down and repairing things on the bench. I've been uh, wanting an actual camera for a while. And this is the way to uh, be able to easily take video with it. And uh, hopefully as I'm uh, editing this video and posting it, hopefully to show up real well in the video. Back with a board, of course it's not powered up, but just to do an example video of how, how easy it is to see the components. You can do time lapse. If you wanted to set it up on a tripod or something of that nature and have something over time with the crosshair on it, it's pretty neat. Be a nice tool added to the bench and it's easy to use. The the only drawback to it is I keep wanting to grip it right where the sensor is and I keep showing my fingers in the in the shot. You'll probably even see it on the video. I'll try to edit that out, but it is hard to it is hard to get your fingers out of the way on that. But once I get used to it, that's gonna be totally fine. Thing after you use this a few minutes, you realize it's a lot better to hold this upside down and just let it let the FLIR one be on top and it just does so much better where you can hold it at the bottom like you're used to when you're trying to keep your uh, your hand out of the way of your camera normally up top. Your hands naturally stay out of the way. So with a drink out of the fridge sitting on the bench and a thermocouple probe hooked to a meter, we show us approximately 45 degrees. With the thermocouple on the on the bottom just sitting there. I do have the FLIR 1 active on my Google Pixel 2. And according to the lower reading on that, it's, it's right at 47. So they're reading very, very close to each other. As I go up to the shinier portion, I'm going to have to move it a little closer. see this now when I get it up there the shinier the higher is reading so I'm reading about 53 55 somewhere around 55 I'm gonna go down to settings and just see if uh, emissivity is on matte it recommends matte we can go like semi-glossy and just see if it reads any different. Yeah, and even though that shiny is now reading about 44, 45. So we can play with the settings on this depending on the material we're trying to read off of. We'll leave it on matte for most things as they recommend. <clears throat> I know that shiny or silver uh, items don't don't show well for the uh, emissivity of them. So go back to normal mode. Forty-eight point two one, right about the same sensor. According to the specs on the FLIR 1, it's got an 80 by 60 thermal resolution, which is not that great. The actual FLIR 1 Pro has a lot higher resolution, but it does have a visual 
the regular FLIR 1 does have a visual resolution of 1440 by 1080. So at least on the screen you still see a good resolution. It has the, uh, the FLIR MSX or, the, or how it actually embosses over the thermal image with the color image camera detail. Gives you a single image and gives you a lot better um, picture quality of especially something like a, a circuit board, the detail. And I think the effective range on this is minus 20C to 120C or minus 4 Fahrenheit to 248 degrees Fahrenheit, which when you're troubleshooting boards, it should be really all you need for the do-it-yourselfer. So I'm really impressed with the little FLIR one. Hope I get a lot of good use out of it. Hope you enjoyed this video and this weekly what is it. Look at this little troubleshooting tool. Next week, the weekly what is it. We'll talk about this device. It is a 23086PM. Usually goes on a high-end circuit board. So what is it? If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe and thanks for watching.